Thank you, Rick. So we were just read in Exodus uh, a little bit of the first chapter and then the very last bit of the last chapter. And today we're going to be diving into the verses surrounding Exodus 3.16. But before we get that, I want to ask you a question. Last week I gave the church a challenge, which was really a challenge, to read Genesis 1 through 50. So I have a request for you. Please bow your heads and fold your hands and close your eyes, and I'm going to ask you a question. So everybody close your eyes. Don't look at anybody around. I'm going to ask you a question. And if you're going to say yes, raise a hand and leave your hand raised for as long as you can. You think you can do that? Nod your heads if you think you can do that. We're going to ask you some questions. The first one's the hardest. Did you read Genesis 1 through 50 last week? If you did, raise your hand. All right. You're doing a great job raising your hand. Keep your hand raised if you can. Next question, did you read Genesis 1 through 25 last week? All right, you're doing a great job, guys. Genesis 1 through 10, did anybody read Genesis 1 through 10 last week? Keep raising your hand. 1 through 5. All right, did anybody read the first verse in Genesis 1, 1 last week? Awesome. Now, last question, did you open your Bible and read it last week? If you did, raise your hand. All right, you can put your hands down. The goal of this series is for everyone to be able to raise their hand at the end of those questions. I'm going to ask them every week, and you're going to get tired of raising your hand, and that's going to be fine. The goal is for all of us to be reading the Bible at least a little bit on our own at home every week. Because... While I love preaching, and I think it's valuable, and I think it's uh, worthwhile, otherwise I don't know why I'm doing it, the Bible is a better teacher than I am, because God is a better teacher than I am, and he speaks through his word, and he will speak to you if you read it. Even if you read just a little bit, he speaks to you. He wants to speak to you because He loves you, and he wants to be in a relationship with you. The Bible is the core of our faith. Everything that we do as Christians should be based on what is happening in the Bible and what the Bible instructs. It's where we receive guidelines for our lives. It's important, and it's not something that we should just try and receive the cliff notes on Sunday morning or on Wednesday nights, or whenever you hear the Bible preached. The Bible is something that should be something you receive for yourself, as well as during those other times. So I want to continue to challenge you. Last week we read Genesis. You don't have to read that again. That one's done. But this week, can you read Exodus? It's 40 chapters. It's 10 less than Genesis. Can you read Exodus 1 through 40? I know on Friday night, I just saw, I, after we got the kids to bed, I, I looked at Ashley. I said, good night, honey. And then I'm on dad duty for a little bit of the night. And you know what I did on Friday night? Instead of watching TV like I'd like to, I read the rest of Exodus because I was behind. It's a challenge, even for me. But I want to challenge you this week to read Exodus 1 through 40 and, and see how God is going to speak to you through this amazing book. Because he spoke to me in ways I didn't know as I read through it this week. So with that, that's going to end up the challenge. Do it, please. Uh, It will bless you more than you think. Uh, And if not, at least try. Uh, Make some progress. We're going to ask you questions. And there's no shame involved, but I see your hands uh, as you raise your hand if you read the Bible or not. Uh, So this week we're going to be reading Exodus chapter 3, verses 16 to 22. So if you'd like, you can open in your your pew pew Bible and you can read with us. Or you can see the the scriptures on the screen. But we're going to be reading uh, in here and that's going to be our focus today. So it says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, uh, the Lord God speaks to Moses. And he says, go. Assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you 
and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hivites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now this amazing instruction that, that Moses received is in the beginning. In the beginning of Exodus, uh, as Rick read, we, we see the Israelites stuck in Egypt for 400 years living as slaves, multiplying and filling the land and working as slaves, probably building the pyramids, which we still enjoy today. And then God heard them. He heard them cry out because of how hard the Egyptians were, tra- were treating them. God heard them. And then we're introduced to Moses. Moses was a baby. He was born. Congratulations, Moses. But Moses didn't have an easy childhood. At three months old, he was put into a, into a basket in the Nile River and left for dead. But God intervened on Moses' behalf. And Pharaoh's daughter found Moses in, 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 the, bush, in, the, in, the, in the reeds. And he t- she took him into his, her own house and had his own mom raise him for him, even though she didn't know that. And Moses grew up in Pharaoh's household, and he learned all the things of Pharaoh. But then he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite slave, and he struck the Isra- Egyptian down. And after that, Moses' life gets harder. Because now he he flees Pharaoh's land. He leaves his household and he flees to a place called Midian. He lives in this wilderness, in this desert, and then he meets a girl. And he gets married. He has some kids. And now Moses is living in Midian as a shepherd for 40 years in the wilderness, serving God with his father-in-law. And then all of a sudden, at, at 80 years old, which... As you know, 80 isn't very young anymore. At 80 years old, God speaks to Moses. The burning bush happens. God, see, God intervenes in Moses' life, and he seeks, God gives Moses this crazy instruction. He gives Moses the instruction to go back to Egypt, the place where he was wanted for murder, to go back there. And to speak to Pharaoh. And to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. These instructions that the Lord gave to Moses might seem pretty straightforward on the surface. But in reality, they're extremely difficult. As far as Moses knew, Egypt was death. If he went back to Egypt, Pharaoh would kill him for him killing an Egyptian. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Blood for blood, after all. But Moses was given this instruction and he said yes. But the the other part that was difficult is that Moses was was supposed to go to the elders of Israel. And Moses may have looked like 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 an Israelite, but he grew up in Pharaoh's household for 40 years. And now for 40 years he's been living as a shepherd. Who's he? To go and speak to the elders, the leaders of the Israelites. He wasn't respected or known by them. How was he supposed to gather them and tell them this crazy thing that God sees them, that he's going to set them free? He's 80 years old. He's got two kids. He's living as a shepherd. And he's given something impossible. However, what God is telling Moses to do is actually the fulfillment of a promise that God gave to his ancestors, that God gave to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So today I want to ask you the question, do you think Moses knew the promise that had been given to his ancestors? Do you think Moses knew what was promised to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and to Joseph, that they would have a land flowing with milk and honey. 
Do you think Moses knew these promises? They were given hundreds of years before. Did Moses know them? Or did he forget them? Like we often forget the promises that God has given us. I fully believe that Moses knew what God had promised. Moses knew what was promised to his ancestors because although he grew up in Pharaoh's household, he identified with the Israelites enough to strike down an Egyptian who was abusing an Israelite. He would have known the stories that the Israelite people were telling. He would have known the promises that they were clinging to. And he would have had hope, along with all the other Israelites, that eventually God would release them from Egypt and they would go to a new place where they wouldn't be ruled over by anyone else and they would be blessed. However, none of the Israelites knew when that would happen. They didn't know when these promises would come to pass. And so now when Moses hears from the Lord that he will bring about the fulfillment of these promises, his heart would have jumped for joy because he has hope that God is going to fulfill his promises. Now today, do we feel that? Or do we forget God's promises? Today, we as Christians have received so many promises from God. And do we find hope in them, or do we live as those who are hopeless because we do not know what God has promised to us as his people? God has given us so many promises that we as believers can receive in our lives, but before we can receive them, we have to know them. The Israelites didn't have a Bible to read. Many of them couldn't even read, but they had word of mouth. For 400 years, they would tell the stories. The stories of Abraham, childless, who had a child at 100 years old. The story of Isaac, of Jacob, and of Joseph, who protected them and survived the famine and how they ended up in Egypt. And they would have repeated the promises that God gave them, that they would have their own land that they would be blessed there. The stories of their ancestors were, no, were known to them, and it was precious to them. On the days when the Egyptians were being cruel, when they were being beaten, these promises from God would have given the Israelites hope to persevere. Maybe they wouldn't see it, but maybe their children would see the day when the Lord would deliver them. The question for us is, do we know the promises that God has made for us so many generations ago? Do we know the promises that the Bible has for us as believers, or do we forget them? And only remember the big ideas of the stories, the main theme or thrust of the Bible. Do we remember God's promises to us, or do we forget them? I can tell you that I personally don't have all of the promises that God has made to his people memorized. I can tell you I don't know all of them. And I wish I did. But I do have some of the promises given to us as believers hidden in my heart and in my mind. And so when times are hard, I can call and trust on these things that the Lord has said. Hebrews 13.5, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Praise the Lord. Matthew 11.28, come to me, come to Jesus, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Psalm 23, that familiar psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though so often I feel like I do. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8, 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Matthew 28, verse 20, and surely I'm with you always, 
to the very end of the age. These are just some of the promises that God has given to us as believers that we can have hope because of. Regardless of our situation, regardless of the task set before us, regardless of the persecution we may face, we can have hope. Because God has made us promises and He is faithful to fulfill His promises. When God says He will do something, He will do that. It's not a might. God doesn't lie. It's not in His character. When God says you will, we say when, not if. And so when Moses was given this next promise, it would have changed his whole outlook. Because Moses didn't know how this would happen. How all of the things that, were, that he was told would be fulfilled, how this promise would come to be. But then God gives him another promise. With many different layers. It says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 18 to 22, The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know, God knows, that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. Promise upon promise upon promise are given to Moses of what will happen. And you know what happens? In the next 11 chapters in Exodus, we see God fulfill his promise to Moses. We see the ten plagues destroy Egypt. We can see Pharaoh's heart being hardened and not letting the people go. We can see when the night when the Egyptian when the Israelites fled, the, them plundering the Egyptians and being given so much gold and silver just so they would leave. Take everything. Leave us. We might live. Everything God promised to Moses came to came to be. Because he was faithful and did what God said. God has similarly, similarly given us promises from long ago. And I believe God wants to give you a promise even today. Just like he did for Moses. God has given us promises in the past that we can trust. But I believe he wants to speak to you today as well. That's why we have the Bible. So that he can speak to you through its pages. This week, as you read your Bible, as you read through Exodus, I want to challenge you to listen to what God has for you. As you read the story of Exodus, which is really the story of God's fulfillment of His promises and promises that He gave to His people before they went to the promised land. That's what Exodus is. It's a story of God's faithfulness and the promises that He set up for His people. As you read this book of God's fulfillment of his promises, is there a promise in God's word that you can use to change your life today? Is there an instruction in these passages that you can use to change the way that you interact with God? Or are there passages in Exodus which can give you hope for the future? The example of the Old Testament teaches us about God and the way that he interacts with us. And it also teaches us a model of how to see God. Exodus shows us that God makes promises and he is faithful and just 
to fulfill those promises if people are follow him and his instructions. Because if Moses would have said, no, I won't go to Egypt, God's promises would have been null and void because he was disobedient. Would the Egypt, Israelites have lived in Egypt for another 400 years? I don't know. Because Moses said, yes, I will go. He was obedient and he saw God's promises fulfilled. Do you know the promises that God has made to you? I know I don't know them all, but I want to know more of them. I hope you feel the same. Do you want to know God's promises so that you can cling to them and have hope because this world is hard to live in? But with God, there's hope. But with God, there is better. And there is hope for the future. So this week, will you search for God's voice and then be obedient to what he instructs you? Will you read Exodus? Will you open your Bible and read something? Will you see how God's promises are still faithful today? His promises are still yes and amen. He is still faithful. And he always will be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your promises. Your promises are so good and they are a blessing to us. We pray that you will help us to see your promises in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to find hope in the promises that, have, that are given to us in your word eat for, our, for our everyday life. Help us to memorize scripture and the passages of the promises that you gave to us so that we can cling to them when times are hard. Give us peace and, pl and blessings this week as we seek you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.